have a slight little leg up on, on other folks. So that's my belief. But anyway, that has nothing to do with what we're here to talk about today, which is what again? Bands? Bands, uh, like corn, Slipknot, right? No. Um, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, for a second, I was like, the vegetable? Oh, wait, no, you're talking about <laughs> <laughs> um, As people have seen, like, there's a, a band announcement that came out today, and, you know, spoiler, we record on Mondays. They actually updated and actually banned things this time, uh, yep. like the last couple where there's just no changes at all. So nothing in EDH, which I know that that wasn't a thing that was going to happen anyways, because they don't do it for a few months yeah, during the yeah. holiday season. The rules committee does, does the bans for EDH. But otherwise, Modern saw a few changes, Popper saw one, Pioneer saw a couple. And overall, I think I'd say they're pretty justified based on what I've been reading about those cards. Yeah, yeah. What are your thoughts on them? I think, um, yeah, I think it was the basically what they did was smart. Modern was was just overrun by the deck scam and Fury and Grief were key pieces of that. In fact, a lot of people thought that grief was going to get it too but they realized that banning fury would inherently nerf grief as well because of the way those two interacted yeah i think i think both fury and the up the beanstalk both of those were really good choices because up the beanstalk was just too powerful it's funny because i had to i had to look up what was going on with up the beanstalk as uh-huh. I, I don't i don't go and play these with people and lgs's and things but like it's like so what about this card <laughs> and then it's like that deck with the solitude, the fury, and it's because uh-huh. the the mana cost of the card counts, even though you're doing it for its other cost. Uh huh. It's like, oh hey, guess what? You're drawing everything. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's like it just it's like adding steroids to your turbocharger. Yeah, yeah, it, yeah. It's 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 nitrous. It's nitrous to your to your car. Like it's just boom, it, it was it was right. And and I had a feeling that they would partially because up the beanstalk. While yes, it's a wild of all drain card it wasn't it wasn't like oko it was super powerful but it wasn't the face card of the set i think that they didn't ban oko as early as they would have because he was the face of the set you know back when original l drain came out i mean he's still the behind the scenes guy of the last set too oh yeah right yeah oh yeah definitely yeah. but when thrones of El drain came out and the face card of the set was just so powerful. They were looking at it and going, we, ah, we really should ban this. And I think they held off maybe a week or two longer than they would have otherwise if he wasn't the face card of the set. Again, this speculation could be wrong, but I think Up the Beanstalk was right. I think bringing back Smuggler's Copter in Pioneer was a good idea because Smuggler's Copter, there, there are answers for it. I think it'll be fine. Right. And I guess that that's worth talking about is that cards do get banned for different reasons. Yeah. And everyone's mm-hmm. always like, oh, you should ban this card. It's overpowered. And it's like, is it really, though? I mean, like, there's good cards, right? Like, everyone still wants Shieldra to be banned. Yeah. But it's not because you there's still solutions to it. Yeah. Unlike Meat Hook Massacre, which is still banned in standard because it's yep. ridiculous. Yep. There's cards that are the key pivotal piece to a deck that every deck that's running, like, that strategy is running that. And it's like, if we remove this, it'd slow them down a little bit and be a bit more competitive. And that mm-hmm. tends to be the main reason. Other reasons cards do get banned like in the EDH sense is sometimes cards are too long to play. Yeah. And that's an important thing. And I'm glad you brought that up. I think it is a very important distinction to note that the rules committee for EDH are the ones who do banning decisions and for EDH and wizards handles basically every other format. Uh, Oathbreaker is another exception uh, where Oathbreaker has, they handle their own ban lists as well, but Oathbreaker is also much smaller compared to EDH, but it's the same thing applies that speaks to the philosophies between the two are inherently different because with the rules committee they are banning cards based off of is this fun to play is this fun to play is this fun to play against and a lot of cards are on the edh ban list because they are not fun to play they make games very unfun but i also think that's why there's a lot more discourse around the edh ban list because it is inherently more subjective right whereas on the wizard side and even the popper like even popper even though they have their own committee the committee is is headed up by Gavin Verhe. He's in house. Like, so it's going to have a similar, it's competitive. It's going to have a similar, you know, marching order as, as the others do. And 
they're looking at how much of the meta is being affected. I found it very interesting uh, with the Monastery Swift Spear, which was banned in Popper. Right. With that one, it was because they noticed that people's sideboards... Exactly. Like 50% of them were trying to adjust for Monastery Swift Spear. And it's like, okay, well, then let's, let's add some diversity back to the game. Let's just take that one card out. <laughs> exactly. And and that and that I, find, I find very interesting. And I think that that goes to show how deeply they look at the data. Because a lot of people on its face, like, like I mentioned in my short today that I put out mono red with with Swiss spear was had a 50.8 percent not 58 50 point eight percent win rate against non mirror matchups and that's not a lot like that's not amazing like that's it's a good it's a good archetype but it's not a tier zero deck but it was when they looked at the sideboards and realized that most other decks were having to plan around it because if they didn't then they would lose Mo mono red would have more wins and i think that was very I, I thought that was a very interesting call out in the fact that they they dig into this data deep yeah definitely and it, it's it's fair to when you look at at the current standard band list there's only four cards mm -hmm. and I, I was reading up into those and why those ones specifically are banned mm -hmm. and a lot of it has to do with of course we took massacre kind of cards yeah. right but then there's like the th other three are all from the Kamigawa set and the the one invoke despair it's only banned because why wouldn't you be running it if you're running black uh -huh. because even if you don't have a target then they just lose life exactly and like just everybody was running it and it yeah. became the, that problem where like regardless of if you're behind or not like oh hey you have an enchantment gone planeswalker gone creature yeah. gone yep not okay too life for that one <laughs> yep it's interesting why different cards get banned for different reasons and i think a lot of people approach it with oh card is too powerful it should get banned but i think invoke despair is a is an interesting example because yes it is too powerful should have gotten banned but it's the reasoning behind it like you said it's why wouldn't you run it if you're playing mono black you run that card regardless of what kind of deck you're running and that was the same thing with a few months back with popper and the initiative cards yeah mm -hmm. because it, it got to the point where standard like very streamlined decks were changing their deck list to include those cards because it was like that big of a benefit to get initiative yeah and then and then you have a similar situation in pioneer with mono green devotion and them banning car and the great creator because that essentially was like a swiss army knife in your deck you because he the car and the great creator was just able to get, bring you get you the answer the exact answer you needed you know like it was one specific deck that was overtaking the meta because it it was a deck that had this swiss army knife that the deck and this super versatile card just overtook the meta and i i find that interesting because you would think other decks would then just use that super versatile card and then it would be fine but not in pioneer there was there was that little that soup of of mono green devotion and Karn, and and I and I'll admit personally, I was very happy that they didn't ban Nykthos. I was worried mm -hmm. that they were going to ban mm -hmm. Nykthos. And if they did, oh man, <laughs> oh geez, yeah, especially because I just bought a bunch. Um, but uh, but yeah, like I think I think it was very interesting. Nykthos is different. Nykthos is that devotion ramp, right? Yeah. yeah. Whereas that feeds into you getting your utility Karn. <laughs> yeah exactly and it's like oh, exactly. hey what do i want for my sideboard no it, it's it's interesting because like i had to go through my my deck list and say okay are any of my decks affected by this and luckily no <laughs> so yeah no, I don't... i'm running the other cards in my other decks <laughs> I, I was I was building in fact i have it almost completely built and i think i believe it or not i actually think that Karn the Great Creator was the, <laughs> was the card I was trying to get more of for it. <laughs> so they saved me some money. And what was the other? Uh, Monastery Swiss Spear in Popper. That uh, was another one because I built, I have a mono, I have mono red, <laughs> mono red deck. And I also built a Boros aggro deck that had it in it just because it's just like again it's it's why wouldn't you include Monastery Swiss Spear if you're running red? It's just, it's one drop haste with prowess that a uh, Yes, please. I will put that in every red deck and popper. <laughs> you know. Yeah, just one drop haste one one is good in any aggro. Oh yeah. Get a prowess on top of it. I mean, like, yeah. Why wouldn't you? Like, yeah. I mean, I think about like the the Rakdos Crackler that I used to run back when I played standard, right? Mm -hmm. A little dude, you can give him haste. Just get out there and start hitting. 
with mono red, and this is in almost every format, every bit of life matters. So, you know, if you're able to get a hasty out there who can just, who can hitch for one, and then in later turns, you can make it bigger by casting other spells, which you're going to cast because you're going to be doing direct damage. You're going to be blowing up creatures. You're right. going to be doing direct right. damage to the face. So yeah, it's, yeah. it's, it was, it, yeah. I think it was a good call. One of the things in talking about bands though, like, Modern's an interesting one because when the format was created, they like instant banned a bunch of cards, uh-huh. and a lot of those are still banned today too. Like the original mm-hmm. artifact lands, mm-hmm. and there there are some people out there on YouTube who've made videos discussing them and going into great details about the decks that would use them and like why and all this. And I can't speak to it as well as they do, but mm-hmm. it, it's it's interesting to those like artifact affinity decks, how much of a difference that makes having that untapped land to come in mm-hmm. play and that's like oh hey by the way like it's indestructible but like you know hey i have not just the like the dark steel citadel which is for color so like oh i'm gonna you know play a great furnace and get my red yep and you can't do anything about it and it's gonna also artifact affinity so that's like two worth because i have the mana and the affinity yep right it's just it's again it's like adding nitrous to those decks yep. which i get why they took them out mm-hmm. it sucks because like they're good cards yeah but they're, yeah they're not banned in commander but you can only have one in your deck which i think is the, the other big thing with commander where like you don't have a full play set right yeah yeah there's a card that was just recently reprinted in the lord of the Rings set and that's caracas yeah uh-huh and it's like oh like oh i can just you know tap and pay the cost and return any legendary to its owner's hand, guess what? Every commander deck has this legendary. Exactly. And like, yeah. Oh, I can do this every turn and just get rid of your commander off the board. I see why. Cause like, I want to play that. Uh-huh. And if, it, if I'm feeling that way about a card, I probably shouldn't be playing it. Have you, have you been doing some self discovery? <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> maybe realizing, wait, the decks I do are mean. <laughs> You should see some of the cards in this deck if I get to play them. Oh, really? <laughs> Bands are also interesting. And and this, again, goes back to the difference in philosophy between the EDH ban list versus the regular magic, the the, um, the wizard's ban list, standard, modern, all that. And and that is the EDH and, and to a lesser extent, the Oathbreaker ban lists, they are an outsider looking in. Like yes, they do work right. with wizards. They are, you know, but they're 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 a completely different entity. So they are going to ban things, you know. Like and like I said, it's a difference in philosophy. Where with the wizards, when they're banning their own cards, on some level, it is an admission that the design team messed up. They missed something. It is a bit, and I think that's partly why modern has more mm-hmm. than anything else. Yeah, right, because they. It wasn't as much of a consideration because, like, you, people think it's power creep like every set. But while there's a flavor of it, you got to keep in mind we're not banning cards at the rate we used to. No, right? Yeah. It's like even if, like a few years ago, like standard set drops, and it's like here's eight more bands, here's sixteen bands. Yep. Because we didn't check anything. And it's in- it's interesting to me because I remember him putting on my old old hat going into Kaladesh. I think it was Kaladesh. I'm pretty sure it was Kaladesh in January of 2017, which was after the release. Actually, I think it was the after re- the release of Kaladesh. Emmer cool the promise end. Smuggler's Copter and Reflector Mage were banned in standard. That was the first standard banning that had happened in six years. The previous standard banning was Jace the Mind Sculptor and Stoneforge Mystic. So that I think that just goes to show you that it had been six years since standard had a banning. And prior to that, it was a Skull Clamp in 2004 skull clamp was banned so just to give you an idea 2004 skull skull clamp is banned in standard 2011 jace the mind sculptor and then 2017 begins the standard bannings like because it has been ban after ban after ban i don't think we've had a standard we may have had like one year of standard without a ban since 2017 it's well it's interesting not the same vein here but like i know for the longest time we didn't have any vanilla creatures in any sets since strixhaven until Mm -hmm. like whatever one of these more recent ones was Mm -hmm. like there wasn't a single vanilla freaking creature yep and it's like i wonder why you're getting cards banned it's because everything has to do something 
Okay. Interestingly, like one of the other news articles that came out today that I sent you, and you're like, "What?" <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Is that apparently they're making another new format on Arena, right? Yeah. Called uh, Timeless. Surprise. Which, <laughs> interesting name. Um, when I was reading it, yeah. there there's two things about it that made me go, "Oh well, it's not kitchen table because it's almost kitchen table." Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's really what I would call it because it's like, hey, if yeah. it's in Arena, you can play it. Mm-hmm. And that that's really what they did. And that's for any of the sets they've released and any arena specific cards too, right? Mm-hmm. And I unfortunately get the point where they have to call it something else because if they called it vintage, that means you'd have to have all the vintage catalog available and they're gonna milk that until they can't. Oh yeah, yeah. That that's yeah, that's gonna be we are gonna have a majority of magic cards on arena eventually, but it's gonna take years. It's gonna take yeah. years. Yeah. With the the release of the the current cons of Tarkir, cons of Tarkir, mm-hmm. yeah, the cons, C A N K A R N S, <laughs> the cans yeah. of Tarkir. <laughs> um, no, with that, they're they're pre-banning the the land, the fetch lands. Yeah. No, so Timeless has a few different other things that are restricted, and they there's like three different cards they picked. Yeah. That are because of like this past weekend or whatever it was, they did a no bands historic just yeah. to see how it would go. They looked at the decks that were doing a little too well and said, yeah. okay, maybe we're going to not let you play with a play set of these cards. I'm glad you brought that up because that was something I was thinking about when I read the article. That shows you that when you when you see a new and interesting way they're doing stuff, like like when they did the historic no bands, like I, I played in the historic basically no bands like they banned a couple of things i think i played that and i was like oh this is interesting i wonder if they're researching something and well guess what <laughs> you know <laughs> that's not to say every little thing they try on arena is going to be them researching but it is something to think about when you're playing in a weird event on arena talking about bands here and we talked about things that are banned and this is just a, a, a question for you and i are there any cards in any formats that you wish they would ban for personal reasons. Because uh, like everyone always gripes at it. Oh, ban Soul Ring and Commander. And it's like, you don't uh, need to. <laughs> nah, you don't need to. Soul Ring's fine. Uh, to be honest, I don't know. Like, I, like that's, I don't really have anything. Nothing jumps out at me as something that I think is, oh, it needs to get, it needs to get banned from, you know, from this format or that format. Like it, because it's, it's very situational. It's very like, I'll give a good example, like beseech the mirror. I'll admit every time I'm playing somebody and they pull out beseech the mirror, I just want to scoop because at that point I know (laughs) I'm probably going to lose. And yeah, there's a lot of cards that are like that. That would be fair. Yeah. And, and, and the thing is, is that like, and yeah, and they, they said that beseech the mirror is, is on their watch list. Like they're paying attention to it because they recognize how powerful it is, but I don't know. Like, I don't, it's, I don't feel like. It's, yeah, I just can't think of anything. Like, Beseech Mirror, I think, would be the closest. But outside of I know a of lot that, of people are complaining about the, the One Ring. Yeah. I think the One Ring has proven to be less of a boogeyman than everybody thought it would be, though. Because I'm, yeah. not, he- I'm not hearing the continued complaint. I was going to say, it's the same thing with Soul Ring. If you play any artifact removal, it's not a problem. Yeah. That there's a lot of rumbling about a card needing to be banned, especially if it is a card that has just been released within the last couple sets. Mm-hmm. And I and I think it's wise that Wizards does this. They wait and see. They take a wait and see approach because, it, you know, and it makes sense, especially with the, like, I'll use the One Ring as, a, as an example. When Lord of the Rings first came out, up through, like, half of the Eldraine of it of it being the the premier set people were saying oh it needs to be banned one ring needs to be banned orcish bow masters need to be banned and i can see from wizard's point of view no we we do not want to ban this <laughs> because if we ban this card that we like this is this is the card that's selling the set okay yeah. we we do not want to ban this card out of one of our largest formats and i can i understand that feeling so they're going to want to wait and see as long as possible and sure enough I think a lot of it was because a lot of people were testing it in their decks to see. And yeah, I was probably winning a lot of games, but a lot of people were probably like, eh, it's not really, it's not doing what I need, what my deck needs to do. So, you know, and, and so I think, I think that was a lot of, of concern for nothing. Now, who knows? It could become a problem again when they release a new set and it becomes a major problem or maybe it just a deck, is constructed that uses it that takes up 60% of the meta 
then yeah, they'll they'll probably ban at that point. But they're not going to ban it now. <laughs> I, I do need to correct myself because I do believe it's indestructible. So artifact removal wouldn't just do it. But you know, if they're damaging themselves to to draw cards, why don't you just lean into it? Yeah. <laughs> oh, you want you want damage? Okay, let's damage you. <laughs> Yeah. No, yeah. like I honestly there's there's nothing I would say that needs like straight up like no one should be able to play this. If anything, I would say and take a more kitchen table approach where you're loosening it, like because like any of these cards that are banned that like Emrakul. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's gonna be like that same guy who busts out that same Ur Dragon deck. And it's like, okay, maybe we don't want to play that anymore. <laughs> yeah. But th- let me put it this way. If your if your pet deck was banned out from under you this week, I do apologize, but guess what? Now you get to fi- find a new pet deck. So look at it that way. So, okay. Right. All right I think Back to the drawing board. Back to the drawing board. Yes. That about does it for today. You can find DM Dingo on Twitch or on the FDS Discord. You can find me, FDSMTG, here on YouTube, FDSMTG, as well as on Twitter, Threads, Blue Sky, FDSMTG, basically everywhere. Also on TikTok as well. Thank you so much for listening, and you all have a wonderful day.